right, so we've seen uh, step one, step two, QuickTime Pro is done. Now let's go to PD Howler and let's use the tab for that. <laughs> there is a tab for that. Um, PD Howler is where we will take these images in, perhaps first as a single image, and then we'll also do the image sequence uh, to see a couple of things we can do with that. So when it comes to a first image, uh, let me start uh, Howler up there. I'm, by the way, I'm doing the encoding of the other earlier recording, so it's not going to be as fast as could be. Uh, but here we go, and uh, one thing we could do is perhaps uh, grab one of these and simply drag and drop them right in here. And this will re replace the existing image, and there you go. So we have this image inside of Howler now. And obviously one of the first things we may want to do is perhaps use this as a selection mask. We can simply clear uh, the background here that's blue by selecting it and you know, marking it in the alpha channel. And then we, uh, we can uh, store this image with essentially a transparent background. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do that. One that I find sometimes really convenient, especially when the blue is all the same or the background is all the same, is to go do to the selection mask and in the selection mask select by something like mid-tones or lights or color key. Now the lights could work for the blue sky, but it also picks up the bright highlights, the, the white uh, specular reflection we have here where the sun is reflecting off of the leaves. And that's no good. So let's rather instead select by the color key. And when you do that, you get to choose the color that you are interested in selecting. Right, so you pick that, maybe instead of looking for RGB difference, you could look for hue, saturation, and value differences, and you can make it tight or relaxed. And pretty quickly, you can also show non tolerance, uh, non linear, and you can pretty quickly select, uh, you know, get a selection mask that is um, indicative of where your tree lives or where your background lives and have the rest become. Uh, Op opaque, and then you can always invert it later on. So, uh, for instance, we select this one. Let's have a look at it uh, through the eye of the overlay, and you see the uh, the purple is the non-selected part, and it doesn't matter now if you, so for instance, here are some holes, there are some gaps that uh, properly matched the same color or the same hue as the blue sky and therefore we do have them also transparent. But uh, at times you might want to increase uh, it a little bit more. You might want to say, well, let's make it even more transparent so that it branches into these areas here, right? So this area here, um, you want it to, to grow the selection mask essentially. So you can go to the selection and uh, do the grow alpha and just by one, one unit, and you see that's already now a little bit more uh, transparent, a uh, bigger area transparent. And it's debatable as to whether this part is uh, supposed to show the background sky or not. Uh, that might need to be transparent too, but no, probably it is from the specular highlights that the sun was, yeah, the leaves were reflecting the sunlight and that's why uh, it's actually not transparent, it's not supposed to be transparent. All right, now sometimes you also have uh, a bit of a harsh, uh, crisp transition on those edges and you'd rather have it a little bit softer so you could uh, or, or the other way around by the way uh, so you could do the adjust alpha thing here with the adjust alpha you get to adjust a bit like the grayscale image uh, contrast adjustment uh, you know to give it uh, more bright when it is bright more dark when it is dark and so some small holes like this one here will kind of vanish uh, and sometimes that's preferable and sometimes it's actually not so you'll have to decide what it is you need and what you want and how you want to get there. Uh, sometimes you actually want uh, some of the hair or some of the leaves maybe semi-translucent and you want to be able to see through it. So the opacity should not be fully opaque here. It should be kind of semi-translucent, semi-transparent, especially for things like these very thin twigs or leaves. Uh, you really need a mix of the color that's in the background and the transparency should let you see some of that as well. It's not just the leaf. There is a little bit of the background sky there too. Uh, but you can find a variety of tools here for the alpha to work on that selection mask. Every once in a while it's a good idea to store the alpha to actually kind of see a uh, black and white or grayscale rendition of it to get an idea of what it looks like. And of course when you're done Make sure that what's really selected is this, uh, the, the tree, uh, the object here. The background is the one that should remain transparent. So don't keep that one selected. Right now what's white is what's selected. So invert that 
and then force that into your image. Go and replace what's in the image. Now you get to see, actually, let's go minimize this. Now you get to see the colors of your tree again, right? And the blue sky turns a little bit purplish.